good evening sir so mm. my question is a uh, 3 year old female child posted for uh, uh, squint surgery sir squint surgery okay i will yes. uh, show you the questions for that yes sir Is the uh, screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay. The so three-year-old female child poses for convert convergent skin repair in the right eye. Okay. What is the medical term for skin, and what is its meaning? Medical term is strabismus. Strabismus. Very good. What is the meaning of strabismus? Strabismus uh, is a visual condition where the gaze is misaligned. Now, visual axis are um, the axis of the eye or misaligned. Okay. So, okay. the establishment means malalignment of the axis. What are the two axes in the eye that should be aligned? And what is the angle formed by them is called? You say mm -hmm. it is a misalignment of axis, isn't it? Yes. So, sir. what are the axes that you, you, know, you require to be aligned for proper vision? How many axes are there in the eye? Two axes. An anatomical axis, another is a visual axis. Okay, there okay. are two axes. One is anatomical axis, which runs from the cornea to the posterior half of the uh, retina. The another is a, from the object or the uh, point of, from where we have to see the rays coming from there and falling on the what is called the fovea. Little lateral to the origin or the point of optic nerve. Okay, so they they don't uh, normally go parallel to each other. They cut across each other a little bit, and they form a small angle. That is called the angle of kappa, K A P P A. Okay, uh, name the extraocular muscles and their importance to anesthesia. Extraocular muscles are um, in, inferior rectus, lateral, uh, inferior rectus and superior rectus, uh, lateral and medial rectus, and two oblique, superior and inferior oblique. Okay. It's important. Is that... It is associated uh, with the uh, ocular cardiac reflex, sir. Okay. Then. <laughs> What do they form by their uh, origin and insertion over the globe? They they are attached to the eyeball or the globe, and they go and get attached to the posterior part of the, uh, the orbit, isn't it? Yes, sir. So these muscles, what do they form to hold the globe in position? What is that total muscle disposition called? Have you ever had cone ice cream? Uh, yes, sir. Cone. <laughs> yes, sir. Called the muscular cone. Okay. Muscular. So you can give the drug for a block intraconal or extraconal. Okay? okay. So you can inject the local anesthetic within the cone formed by the uh, extraocular muscles or outside the extraocular muscles. So there are two techniques. One is called the vitrobulbar and peribulbar. Otherwise called as intraconal and extraconal. Okay. okay. So there is another important anatomical importance for us. One is oclocardiac reflex. By pulling these muscles, they can reduce and can cause bradycardia. The other is uh, when you try do a regional technique, there are two techniques. One is called retrobulbar and intraconal injection of local anesthetic, which uh, requires lesser amount of volume of uh, local anesthetic but carries more risk of injury to the it's globe okay. as well as injury to major blood vessels and causing anatoma whereas peribulbar which is outside the cone form the larger volume is required but much more safer and much more commonly practiced yes what are the anesthetic challenges in this case so initially these are all some of the questions to put you off that may be asked in the viva when you present yes, the case sir. you may be thinking Three-year-old child, pediatric anesthesia, this way, that way, you are mentally prepared for that. Suddenly, they may throw you out of gear by asking these sort of questions. Okay, that is the reason why I have added these questions. 
So okay. what are the anesthetic challenges in this three year old female posture for convergent spin? Uh, my first concern is pediatric con uh, pediatric case. So pediatric, the pediatric case, very good. Uh, the second one is uh, um, uh, the strabismus is uh, may or may not be associated with syndrome. So they are at a higher risk for malignant hypothermia. Excellent. And, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, intraoperatively, uh, there is a risk, uh, they might be oculocardiac reflex. Very good. Um, and uh, uh, postoperatively, uh, they are at higher risk for postoperative nausea vomiting. Nausea vomiting. Fantastic. So you have covered all the points. What are the important points to be elicited in the history? Uh, first, starting from the age of the patient, sir. Because hmm. the surgery is. Uh, the age of the patient, uh, they would, <laughs> you would have got it from the uh, record itself. So you don't uh, uh, ask it as a history, how old their patient is. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned about birth, some syndromes and uh, malignant hypothermia. So, would you like to ask any questions regarding to that and avoid some drugs? Uh, so we should ask for any syndromic features, sir. Hmm. Uh, then uh, uh, natal history. Family history of malignant hypothermia. Okay. Any relative or somebody mm -hmm. who underwent a surgery, did they die and did they die of a high temperature and all that, history can say. Or any associated musculoskeletal problem because the syndromes are all mostly uh, genetic problems with the musculoskeletal injury. So that also is the, so that may pose a the airway difficulty or a possibility of malignant and describe the intraoperative management of this child after eliciting the history uh, supposing you find that the child is otherwise fit uh, cvsrs everything is all right no lri no uri child is a hemoglobin is normal weight gain is normal for the age what should be the weight ideal weight for this child Three years old. Into two plus eight. 14 huh? kg, sir. Into two plus eight. Age into two plus eight. Age into two plus eight. So 14 kg. 14 kg. Okay, very good. Mm. So how do you manage this cooperative? What are the pre-op instructions you will give the parents and what any pre-medication you want to give? Sir, uh, an elective procedure uh, or an I will explain to the parents and uh, 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 Pre-op medica pre medications I will give anticholinergics, uh, mm. glycopyrrolate zero point, uh, glycopyrrolate is zero point zero one milligram per kg. Mm. Instead of that, you can say in micrograms. That is much more easier than zero point zero one milligrams. Always, uh, whenever the dose is very small in pediatric, always say it in micrograms instead of milligrams. Okay. So it may I be 10 micrograms, 20 micrograms. That is much more easier to calculate. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So any, uh, will, will the child have separation anxiety? Three years old? Uh, yes, sir. Because. Yes, definitely it will have. It yes. will not come to you easily. So for what sedation you prefer to give for this child? Pre-med, either oral medazolam. Hmm. Or, uh, Another uh, thing I told you about uh, cleft lip and cleft palate or the pediatric cases we discussed in the last class. I told you about a very good uh, oral preparation which has an anti-emetic property, anti-allergic property, bronchodilator property. Phenotycin. Phenotycin 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 is also a very good choice for this pediatric cases. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the NPO according to the guidelines. So what is the like? Uh, can you give uh, tender coconut water at uh, before two hours? Uh, no, sir. Yes, sir. No. Yes, yes. Clear liquids, clear liquids, clear liquids, clear liquids, so you can give that. Uh, and uh, what about the uh, uh, 
would you do it under a regional block or would you like to give ga sir uh, my case is a 3 year old child so i will prefer under general anesthesia sir ah, so the child will not cooperate for regional technique you cannot give a cerebral bar block and do it in adults you can always do it under regional technique like cerebral bar block but child will not tolerate or cooperate so you have to give ga so how are you going to give ga uh, supposing your child is uh, already pre medicated with uh, oral midazolam child is sleeping uh, would you like to inject a glycoperlite im or would you like to go for some other method of induction uh glycopyrrolate uh, i'll give iv sir ha so iv line how are you going to use an iv mm. line without stimulating the child or making the child cry sir under uh, sevoflurane if the mm. if the child is crying i will do without it under making the child unconscious can you secure a painless iv insertion yes using emla cream sir emla cream so they can always think of that very very important Okay, so you can yes. start an IV in the ward itself using amla cream, and then use uh, glycoperlite and other induction agents through the IV line itself, and then go for IV induction, which is much more easy. Can you use succamethonium in these cases for intubation? So I will avoid succamethonium due to uh, risk risk of uh, malignant hypothermia, sir. is that the only reason or is there any reason specific to this particular case of strabismus correction sir uh, it uh, prolongs the tone of that uh, extraocular muscles so hmm. the surgeon will not be able to differentiate when he is performing the force duction test very good fantastic so it is better not to avoid better to avoid such a go for non depolarizing muscle relaxation straight away for intubation So would you like to use any specific type of endotracheal tube for this surgery? I will prefer uh, RE tube, sir. RE tube, oral RE tube. Okay. Oral. Any specific, yeah, oral RE oh, or out oral tube for so that it will not uh, interfere with the surgeon, sir. Okay, sir. Right. Now, what are the? How are you going to maintain anesthesia? So for induction, you can use a propofol. And for in, uh, intubation, you can use uh, cisatracurium or atracurium. And you can use a oral drip tube. And uh, maintenance, how do you do? Do you uh, use oxygen, nitrous oxide, and CO, or oxygen, air, and CO? I will use oxygen, air, and CO, sir. If why you why you want to avoid nitrous oxide? Uh, because of because these patients are at increased risk for postoperative nausea vomiting, so I will avoid nitrous oxide. Nitrous oxide is an emetogenic agent, so it will yes. aggravate the emetic problem. So better to avoid nitrous oxide. Okay, very good. And uh, um, uh, supposing intraoperatively, as the surgeon pulls on the extraocular muscle during correction, and the bradycardia occurs, what will you do? So my drug of choice uh, will be atropine, zero point zero one milligram per kg. Immediately you will give atropine. The first attempt itself. We'll ask the surgeon to release. The stimulation. Ah, uh, uh, first ask the surgeon to stop. Wait for a few minutes. Ventilate. See whether the heart rate reverts back to normal from bradycardia. Then ask him to proceed again. If again it goes back to bradycardia, ask him again to stop. The repeated stimulation itself will abolish this uh, auricular cardiac reflex, and heart rate will remain steady. Only in conditions where the heart rate becomes very low and there is an imminent cardiovascular collapse in the form of hypotension, then you have to use atropine and also start CPR. Okay, so that is the answer that you have to give. So the stopping the stimulation in most of the times. Will abolish this reflex and patient will behave normally with a normal heart. So don't say atropine as the first answer. Okay? Okay. Stop the stimulation is the first answer. Then continue after a few seconds or minutes, and then watch and observe. Atropine is indicated only in very severe degrees of bradycardia associated with total 
cardiovascular collapse in the form of hypotension and desaturation in all the things. Okay? Yes, sir. So, what is the uh, reflex arc for this uh, uh, oculocardiac reflex? What is the afferent path? What is the afferent path? So, afferent pathway uh, is uh, via the uh, long and short ciliary nerve. They are taken to the ciliary ganglion, and uh, by the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve, it relates to the sensory the nucleus of the vagal nerve. Is the efferent, the vagus nerve, uh, to the SA node, sir? Very good. So what are the uh, other intraoperative, of course, anticipated one is the oculocardiac reflex. Why any other reflex is there? Ocular respiratory reflex. Ocular respiratory, ocular emetic, all these reflexes. If the patient is in light plane of anesthesia, they can even have a vomiting intraoperatively. Of course, with the acute in situ, we will not have any problem. What regional techniques are used during this surgery and why? After so, induction of anesthesia, would you ask the surgeon to do some regional techniques? Uh, Retrobulbar or septinon blocks can be. Uh, not septinon. Septinon is not uh, indicated here. Peribulbar. Uh, bulb, mm -hmm. not even retrobulbar. You can give a peribulbar block. Okay. With just a 2 to 3 ml of uh, local anesthetic agent will nicely <clears throat> give good intra and post op analgesia so that you can avoid opioids which will may aggravate the nausea and vomiting post op that is the reason why you prefer to add a regional technique what is force reduction test and what role is played by anesthesia in this test performed so in force reduction test is used to assess the mechanical restriction to movement of eye by move, moving it into each field of gaze. It is done by the surgeon by grasping the sclera near the corneal limbus uh, mm -hmm. by a pair of forceps. So this test allows the surgeon to differentiate between uh, a, a paratic muscle or a, a mechanical restriction which limits the eye movement. What is belt sign and how does it interfere with surgery? Bell sign, uh, it is a protective reflex on stimulation of the cornea. There is upward uh, upward rolling of the eyeball. Mm -hmm. So it means there is uh, inadequate plane of anesthesia. Mm -hmm. So we have to deepen the plane of anesthesia. Excellent. So the post of problems and how they are. <clears throat> so my concerns for this case will be post-operative nausea vomiting. I will manage it by antiemetics like condensatron 0.15 milligram per kg or dexamethasone 0.1 milligram per kg. And post-op pain is managed by uh, opioids with fentanyl or alfentanyl, sir. Opioids you want to give? It, uh, <clears throat> you just know you said you want to avoid uh, vomiting. MSA so is paracetamol. Ah, paracetamol, paracetamol 20 milligram per kg. Okay. Yes, sir. So that is the thing. I'll just share a quick uh, PPT 